Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Greg's Restorations. Uh, today we're driving a 1957 Ford Thunderbird that we restored for a customer over the last two years. Uh, we're going to take it for a ride. Come on with us. So yeah, this car came in, uh, was originally a New Hampshire car. The original owner was uh, purchased this car new and then it was left to his daughter and son-in-law and they wanted to restore this car in his memory. So this car came in, it was uh, already started to have restoration work done from another shop, but uh, the customer could tell that the restoration work wasn't the quality that they wanted. So they you know, did an internet search and watched our YouTube videos and uh, found us. So uh, they are local to Massachusetts. A lot of other YouTubers out there are commenting on us about how we're, you know, we restore a lot of other cars from out of state. So this is a New England car and, uh, you know, was, it definitely has showed its age. This was a very challenging project from the start right to the end. This car has been in accidents before previous, previous restorations from, you know, back in the 70s and 80s. So we had to go back through and fix a lot of old metal work and, uh, you know, we stripped this car down to bare steel and, you know, redid everything from the ground up virtually. Uh, we did not take the body off the chassis on this car because this car was restored in the 80s and it was actually really nice under there. So to save some the customer some money, we ended up opting to do that part of the project because it was all real nice. Uh, we just cleaned it up and did some touch-ups under there. The scope of the project was body work and um, mechanical work. So the vehicle came in, did not run. Half the body had been already stripped down to bare steel. Finished taking the car apart and uh, stripped it down to bare steel. Did all the body work, metal straightening, rust repair. And then uh, we used all Sherwin-Williams automotive base coats and undercoats. We painted this car back colonial white. This is the factory color from this car. In the engine bay, just from the heat, all the paint started to crack and stuff like that. So. We wanted to you know, make the engine bay just as nice as the exterior of this car. This thing is pretty fun to drive. Um, as you know, I'm big into the four-wheel drive trucks and SUVs. Doing a you know, 50 sports car is kind of a little new to me. We tackle a lot, of, a lot of things here at the shop, so it's kind of nice to be in something different. We're always doing land cruisers and trucks. The overall objective of this car was to keep it stock and authentic, so we try to keep everything as authentic and numbers matching as possible. It is all original. The original owner's daughter owns it now. And uh, so it's kind of cool to kind of see a car like this staying into the family. Most of our restorations are all sentimental and passed down from generation. That's why we do what we do. Some of the most challenging parts of this project was restoring the body in such poor shape after we stripped it and that bringing it back was, was a challenge. Whoever did the body work previously did a lot of metal work and a lot of grinding, so the metal was thin in areas that had to be repaired. Doing some of these body lines as well was a challenge, just making everything flow and get all the, all the gaps and all the body lines correct. As well as spraying this color. White is a very hard color to spray. It's very hard to see when you're spraying white because white, you can't see your overlapping patterns and it kind of blends into each other. Like with another color you can you can see your stripes. A lot of curves, a lot of contrasts to this body. We're here so we're out driving it, we're out enjoying it. The customer's gonna be picking up next week and uh, be enjoying it for the summer. So this vehicle has just over 100,000 miles on it. The odometer right now says it only has 5,292 miles on it, but that's not realistic. So the odometer has actually gone over and spun around the clock. It's kind of neat with some of these old cars, they didn't have odometers that went over 100,000 miles. So they actually stopped at 9999. See the evolution of cars and what they thought of back in the day, because they virtually didn't think a car could last 100,000 miles. To see this car, 65 years later is pretty pretty awesome. So it's kind of funny, it's got power steering, power windows, and drum brakes. It is also a non-AC car. All we do have is just heat, but it's got, um, it's a convertible. You don't really need, you don't really need air conditioning in it. In 1957, you could have got two engine models for this car, as well as the supercharged model, but they only made, I think, just on around 100 of them. They were very rare. For this car, you could have got a 292, which had 
just over 200 horse, or you could have got the 312 that had uh, about 245 horsepower. It's pretty awesome to have a V8 car. It came with a four bar Holley carburetor on it. It's definitely not slow. Compared to modern, you know, sports cars, it's, you know, primitive. And it's made it up to a three-speed automatic transmission. These cars were mostly manual, um, but this one was an automatic car. For the engine work on this car, we did um, pull the engine out of it, pull the transmission out of it, service the transmission. We went through the engine. We did not do a full, complete rebuild on it. It seemed healthy from our diagnosis, so we, you know, just stripped it down. We did all the head gaskets and everything on that we just didn't get into lower end bearings and pistons and stuff like that you know this car had been previously worked on i would say in the 90s it was restored one cool option it does have is it does have power windows and it has non-power drum brakes it does stop pretty good but you know maybe in the future the customer wants to do a disc brake conversion on it but for right now we're um, going to keep it the drum brake setup it we're not going to be taking it to the track and you know doing 130 miles an hour in it every weekend so mostly what the customer is going to be doing with it now is taking it up to their uh, vermont home for the summer and driving around with the family these cars were very desirable in the late 80s and early 90s they've kind of drooped off a little bit on uh, price so if you're looking for a four thunderbird as your classic car to buy you can pick one up pretty relatively at a good price um, you know i'm actually starting to think about buying one for myself because they're a nice driving car they're comfortable oh this was ford's answer to the corvette the corvette came out in the early 50s this was ford's answer to compete with chevrolet on their sports cars they only did a three-year run of this car though 55 56 and 57 57 this car is probably my favorite it has larger fins in the back and it has a different trunk they changed some of the body styling on it they changed the grill it was the last year it was kind of like their last hurrah with this thunderbird model in my personal opinion ford went to a kind of like a family luxury car after 57 and then you know they did a tribute car in I believe in the 2000s, I've only seen like one or two of those cars. So this car was way more popular than the Corvette when it came out. It definitely sold way more than Chevrolet. I think it was like Chevrolet only sold um, in the hundreds of the Corvette and the Thunderbirds were selling in the thousands. Kick the Corvette's butt, the rest is history, I guess you would say. In 1957, 21,380 cars were produced. It was the largest production run of this three-year model. I think it was kind of like the last hurrah. And then they stopped making this body style. It's kind of a shame because it's really time, it's, it's a timeless piece. The only thing I don't really like about this car is getting into it, the steering column is, it's non-adjustable. So if you're a bigger guy, it's gonna be hard, harder for you to get in and out of this car. The last two-door car that Ford made was in 1938. Ford stopped making two-door cars in 1938 and then reissued the, the sports car two-door in uh, 1955. So it's kind of got some cool history behind it. Another thing about the 57 is they moved the spare tire into the trunk before it was actually on the back of the car. They also had cars, you had Continental kits on them as well, but this car, they moved the spare tire into the trunk to kind of give it a more sporty sports car look. Another kind of unique thing about this car is the ignition is on the left side of the steering column. Kind of like a European sports car look. That's kind of what they were kind of going for as well. It's fun to drive. You're really low to the ground. Uh, this car is also a convertible. All it has is a hard top or uh, no hard top. So we don't have a convertible top for it. The roof comes off of it and it's uh, an open cabin. There's also, there's a rain cover that we have on it. You see all the snips and buttons on it so if you get caught in the rain when you go out to dinner at least the interior won't get wet on it we redid the interior on this car we had the seat reupholstered redid the carpet uh, repainted a lot of stuff on the interior uh, repainted the hard top restored all the weather stripping restored the power windows all the motors were all junk and didn't work all the gauges working in it got the tachometer working we're going to be installing a uh, aftermarket sound system in this car that is a uh, original copy of the town and country radio that is was in this car originally it has a 80s uh, cassette in it right now but we've been on uh, eight month back order for this town and, town and country radio so uh, that radio is going to have all its modern features the town and country radio had different frequencies in it so if you were actually 
in the town, if you were in town or if you were out in the country, they had like more power on different settings so that you could get more stations if you wanted to listen to Elvis from like 1957. Well-known artist of his, of his time. The new radio is still gonna have those features. It's pretty awesome that a lot of aftermarket manufacturers still make aftermarket parts for cars like this. Because without them, we would be stuck. They pretty much sell every possible part you can buy for them. You can get aftermarket parts as well as you can get resto mod parts. Um, you know, we get upgraded suspension, upgraded wheels and tires, performance parts for them as well. I want to do a, a nice shout out to a good friend of ours and customer, uh, Bruce Weber. One of our longtime customers that actually has a few of these cars and uh, he actually had a lot of extra parts kicking around and stuff that we needed and uh, if we ran into trouble he was like our encyclopedia. Like I said before, I don't work on a lot of these cars. I don't know everything about them, so it was nice to have somebody in my back door to help us when we needed help. So thanks, Bruce, for all the help. Thanks for watching our video, and uh, stay tuned for the next.